a little wet out there today. <laughs> Been wet for a few weeks. Uh, yeah, Coach, um, what are some of the things that uh, the Jets offense presents for you with a young kid scrambling around a little bit and making plays for them? Well, it's for like the third week in a row. we got a quarterback that can run. The guy's a good athlete. The guy's got a really, really strong arm. Um, really makes plays out of the pocket very, very well. It makes things difficult, you know, in the rush. And when he gets out of the pocket, he's extremely dangerous. And that's Tennessee. They, you know, um, Gave up some big plays to him uh, when he was out of the pocket, and that, that's a problem. So you gotta, you got to not let him get out there very often or you got to at least keep pressure on him when he is out of there. You spoke so highly of Isaiah. How tough would it be replacing him uh, as he went down? Well, it's always tough. You know, anytime you lose a starter, it's, it's always, you know, uh, there's a reason why the other guy was backing him up a little bit. So... It, you know, we're, I'm, I'm going to miss the guy. I'm not only going to miss him, though, just because he was a good player. I'm going to miss him because of him. Uh, I always thought he was really in tune into the game, very knowledgeable, very uh, did a great job of communicating. You lose not only just the physical aspect sometimes, but there's a lot of other aspects. He's, he was a good, good locker room guy, a good guy to have in the meetings, and, and very informative. So, hey, we'll find out. It's, that's, that's the NFL. That's part of the football. That's why you get – put on a 53-man roster because your name's going to get called at some point in time during the season. And generally speaking, in the past, it's usually been defensive backs. So like I told you, one year we had eight starting corners in one, one season. It is what it is. So uh, next guy's got to know. That's why those guys got to be in tune even when they're not playing, stay up on everything because you never know when your name's going to get called. Sometimes it's in the middle of a game or early in a game in this case. How did he change it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, did his emergence maybe change? You maybe brought in multiple guys at that spot, or I don't know what the. He didn't plan. change it at, at, basically at all, Michael. I mean, he was kind of like the Logan Ryan's, the Ladarius Webb's, the guys that I've had. He was like that. that he didn't change anything. That, that was the good thing was the fact that I didn't have to change because of him. So there wasn't a change. I could actually do the stuff that I had done at Baltimore and at Tennessee because of Isaiah. So. Uh, he didn't change anything. He, it, it was, to his credit, he fit in just like we wanted him to. Just maybe now I need to ask this. Does that put you in a position where maybe we use different guys in different situations versus one guy? Could be. I mean, I, I can't answer a question that we haven't really done this week. So we're going to look at a lot of different options there this week, see what those guys can do. I'm going to try my best as a coach to not put them and ask them to do things they can't do. If there's different guys that can do different things, that may be what we do. Um, we just, I can't answer that. I can't tell you what I'm going to do until the end of the week, and then I wouldn't tell you at the end of the week. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk again in week two. I'll tell you after Sunday at the word. How did you evaluate Avery in that spot last week, this past Sunday? Oh, had some, had some good plays, had some not so good plays. I mean, he just got thrown into it, and all of a sudden, and uh, – you know, it's a, it's a tough situation sometimes for a rookie. You haven't been playing, haven't been playing, been special teams, been a returner, and all of a sudden now you're the starting nickel early in the game. And, you know, we got a little bit of game plan stuff. And so it's, uh, you know, but overall I thought he did, he did well. He did well. I mean, he did as well as we could probably expect put in that situation. None. Uh, none at all. The only time I see defenses is the defenses that are playing against the offense that we're going to play. Yeah. I mean, I come in at five and go home at 11, and it's all watching their offense and watching how other defenses play them. I don't get to watch Philadelphia's defense unless Philadelphia is playing a team that we play. So watching another team's defense means nothing to me during that week. i got to spend all my time on that offense. And like I say, they played New England, so I saw New England's defense. I saw them play Tennessee. I saw Tennessee's defense. I'm familiar with it, so I kind of knew a little bit of some of the stuff that was going on and how they were calling the game. Um, you know, um, Denver. You know, I just watched the teams that they played. Um, how would you evaluate um, Green, T.J. Green's play so far this season? I 
know he got some reps when Terrell was out. Well, he's, you know, I was really, really pleased with him after the New York game. I thought he got thrown into a situation there with uh, A.J. out, and I thought he, he played really well. Um, he just got to keep playing. I mean, I thought I think he's doing okay. He, you know, he had a tough break there on the one that they, the guy just threw the daggone ball up, and the guy catches it in the end zone. Um, he, just, he just lost the ball. And he, he actually fell down, and when he tried to get up and go get the guy, you know, he – Tried to just go man the guy and tried, didn't look for the ball. And, and you know, you, when you fall down, you're in a panic state that you got to go and get the guy that you're covering in man coverage. And that's what he did. And he just lost track of the ball and the guy caught it. So, but, you know, I don't want that, that play that to me does not define TJ at all. And, you know, it just, it happened. I've seen it happen to all pro guys. It happens. But that doesn't define how he's been playing. He's been he's been pro progressing pretty good. How do you help your defense match the crowd noise? Obviously, you guys going into a whole other country. Matt Ryan even said, like, you know, the atmosphere is different. Do you take that into account when you're preparing for this? Sure. It's, it's really both teams got to play it like it's an away game. Because I don't know if you've been to many of those games, it's like a soccer match. The noise never ends. <laughs> it just hits all the time. And, you know, you're going to see uh, – John Elway jerseys up in the stands. You're going to see everything. I mean, who knows who they're cheering for? They're just cheering. So you, to me, it's just, it's to me is a, uh, it, it's, it's a fun atmosphere. I think it's a fun atmosphere to play over there. I think it's, they're excited about it. It's usually a great crowd, a capacity crowd. They're loud. Um, I think it's a great atmosphere to play in. On who now? Corey Davis. Oh, on Corey? Yeah. He's played well. He's always been a guy that, um, to me, he's got a big catch radius. He's a big guy. He's fearless over the middle. He's not afraid to go over the middle and catch the ball. Um, good route runner. Got deceptive speed because he's long. You know, everybody thinks of guys that are just really quick and stuff. And, but he's not that, he's, but he's got deceptive speed when he can turn it on. Like he turned one up last week on a kind of a scramble play on, on uh, Tennessee and just ran by those guys. So, and, he's get, and he'll go up and get the ball. I mean, he's got great hands. So I think he's, he's playing exceptionally well. Um, he had a big year last year. He, I mean, they're trying to get him the ball. And so I, he, he's, a, he's a really good player. Yeah, the thing that the thing that we're the thing that we are not doing well on that stuff is as a defensive back, you got to go attack the ball almost like a basketball player goes to get a rebound. You never catch the ball with your thumbs out. The receivers catch the ball with their thumbs out. If you're a receiver, you're catching the ball unless it's down below your waist. You don't have a choice. It, my hands are going like this, and just like when you go up, if you try to cradle the ball in, the guy's got a chance, you know, it's, it's going to hit off your hand. you got to go get it. So even if you miss it, it's like a rebound. I'm knocking it down. I'm not tipping it. You never, you never catch a ball like this. you got to go get it. you got to go attack the ball. And we sometimes just kind of baby it in and, you know, if we were, if they were great, if they had great hands, they'd be receivers. So I'm just saying that. There, but there's been some great defensive backs that I've had, and and those guys really go attack the ball, and that's the thing we got to do, and we got to do a better job of drawing it and drawing it into them. If that's what they got to do, they got to go attack the ball. Don't let it come to you. You got to go to it. You heard people say, you know, get it at its highest point. Well, that's attacking the ball, and sometimes we don't do that, and we don't make the pick. Is there what? Atlanta. <laughs> you trying to get me fired or what? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm happy right where I am. It's either this or be.
Hard Northern High School, my old high school back in Ohio or something. No, I love I love it here. Well, you got a bunch of guys that obviously if they're on the 53-man roster or even on practice squad, we thought enough of them to be on this team. So they have talent, and they, each one has different types of talent. And what you got to do is assess going into a game, that's from a defensive standpoint, okay, is this going to be a game where we're going to be in a lot of sub-defense or we're going to be in a lot of base defense? That sometimes has a bearing on line, basically linebackers and D-line. DBs are probably pretty standard across the board unless the guy's injured. But the other thing, too, is injuries always takes into account. But just let's say there's no injuries. It's really going to be based on what's the game plan asking for, okay? If we're playing a lot of sub, there's only two D linemen in the game. And if you're going to play a lot of it, if you have four D linemen, that's probably going to suffice. If you're playing a base game where there's three defensive linemen again, you probably need five, okay? Then also taken into account is special teams, okay? Are any of these guys involved in special teams? If you've got two guys close and one guy – is going to be really your fourth or fifth guy up. He's just a rotational guy, but he's also could be a starter on some special team. That's going to take precedent. So, so it's it's all those things. That's why bottom line is Art has to make the decision on who's active and who's not because he has to look at the whole team. Does he need an extra tight end? Is there one beat up so he may need an extra tight end? Well, that means somebody else has got to go down. Well, is it going to be a defensive guy? Is it going to be a linebacker? How many linebackers do we? There's all those things that go into account. And all we do is present, here's who we'd like to have, and then he has to make the decision based on what's best for the team. So I hope that answers your question. But the, the thing of it is, is what you're is kind of saying, though, when one guy's up one week and one guy's up the next week, they're probably very equal in talent in what we expect from them. It's just a matter then of do we need an extra lineman, an extra backer, or what do we need for that game plan? Well, I think, I think they're, they're getting there, and, and it's just I think they're, very, they're getting very comfortable with it, and we got to just kind of keep doing the same thing. Like I say, I told you a week or so ago, and we scaled back a little bit because I felt like I was probably throwing too much at them uh, early and we tried to scale that back. And, our, you know, like in this last game, it's just it, it's very frustrating and it's very disappointing for all of us. It's disappointing for you guys. It's disappointing for all of us. It's just we got to get rid of the loose plays, and it just there's some plays that are just, you know, that happen to us, and just can't. Just like even the throwback, we got the quarterback under duress, and he throws over to the back, who's not even in the route. He's just standing there, you know. And what, but we kind of take our eyes off of what we have to do and go do something else, and it didn't have anything to do with the comfort, you know, being comfortable in the scheme, because the scheme didn't call for that. It was just somebody kind of, and it wasn't something malicious in any way that I'm going to go do something else. It was just, okay, I see the quarterback scrambling, and so we don't stay at home over there where we need to stay so that he can't throw that pass. Or if he throws it back there, we knock it down or pick it off. Those are the little things. We just got to, we just got to really keep paying attention to the little details. Those are the things we had some chances to pick some passes off in that game. We had plenty of opportunities to win that game, and we just we didn't do it. And it's not because they didn't have a mental error and line up in the wrong place or run the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. We just we just got to keep working out those details, and that's you know. But I think they're getting very comfortable with it, you know, and and we just got to keep working it every day in practice. Thank you, coach. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks, coach.